All right. Welcome, everyone, to Builder De Builders Declare Australia's 18th webinar, which is Bridging the Performance Gap and Why We Need As Built Validations for Our Energy Ratings. My name is Hamish White, one of the founding members of Builders Declare and Director of Sanctum Homes, and I'll be your host for this evening. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I'd also like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. In today's webinar, we hope to demonstrate to you why we need as-built validations for our energy ratings. This year, the Nationwide Energy Rating Scheme, or NATHERS, is being expanded to include a whole, to include whole of house assessment. This move will help reduce energy consumption by improving a home's energy efficiency. But what good is it to have on paper a house that is seven star or even 10 star if the house that's being built is not being checked or tested? A typical energy rating will identify a required insulation glazing and with the whole of home assessment, the energy consumption of your appliances, including heating, cooling, hot water systems uh, and cooking. However, this assessment is only theoretical. There is no statutory requirement to check. At this point, I'd like to introduce to you our expert speaker, Anthony Jenkins from Outlier Studio, who's gonna tell you more about why we need as-built validations for our energy ratings and how you as the builder, owner, architect and designer can make sure your building is being built as designed from an energy performance point of view. Anthony brings with him a wealth of experience. He's the owner, founder, and lead designer of Outlier Studio and a former chippy with over 15 years of industry experience in multiple trades. Not only do Outlier Studios design beautiful and sustainable homes, they also do air leakage and insulation inspections and energy rating validations. And like us here at Builders Declare, Anthony and his team are on a mission to improve building design and construction in Australia. Today's webinar is proudly brought to you by our personal great mates uh, from Templestowe Timber and Hardware. Uh, personally, I've been using, for, using Templestowe Timber and Hardware for over 10 years, and I've consistently been blown away by their excellent customer service and uh, quality timber. Uh, you can get in touch with Paul and the team at sales at templestowtimber.com.au and they have a fantastic online shop where you can buy all your workwear, order timber and all your materials and you can check that out at www.templestowtimber.com.au uh, and you can get in touch with them uh, 9846 2222. All right, let's kick off today's event. Um, the information you're about to receive is based on the experience of the presenters and may not relate to your situation. If you'd like more specific advice, please get in touch with us via email. Uh, today's webinar, like normal, will be between 40 to 50 minutes, uh, and then there'll be 10 to 15 minutes at the end for some questions. Um, if you want to pop some questions in, just pop it in the chat feed down the bottom. Um, but at this point, I'm going to throw it over to you, Anthony, and uh, take it away. Great. Yeah, thank you, Hamish. And uh, thank you to Builders Declare and those who have supported and, and made this webinar possible. Um, yeah, it's great to be surrounded by such passionate people and advocating to elevate the current industry standards. So, uh, yeah, welcome uh, all to Bridging the Performance Gap. Uh, in this webinar, you will listen to topics that highlight the importance of verifying that a home will perform as built as it was intended to in a NATHERS thermal assessment or energy rating. Uh, you'll hopefully leave the webinar with an understanding of just how critical it is that uh, our homes are performing as built and not just assumptions in a theoretical energy rating assessment. If you don't already, you should be provided with the, uh, the learnings on the best practice and what is involved in an as-built verification and how simple it is to, to achieve. Uh, Passive House um, has a, has a as-built uh, verification incorporated into the certification process. And I personally believe that this is one of the major reasons it is so appealing to people. However, it shouldn't be just limited to Passive House having all of the fun. So uh, instead, let's, uh, yeah, let's make this a part of all builds in Australia. 
So to start off with, I'm just going to have a little bit of a short session, um, so just a little mini lesson. So uh, NatHertz, or the Nationwide House Energy Rating Scheme, is a software assessment that measures a home's energy requirements for heating and cooling, which is based on almost 70 years of research from the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, or better known as the CSIRO. And it generates a star rating out of 10. The higher the star rating, uh, the less energy that is needed to heat and cool the home. The main intention of NatHertz is to reduce the reliance on artificial heating and cooling. The heating and cooling is responsible, well, heating and cooling um, being responsible for, for pretty much a majority of, of, of a home at around about 60% of its energy consumption uh, use and greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, I just want to mention, uh, although the front end software interfaces have their growing pains, there's probably a few chuckles happening there, um, I consider NatHerz software to be a really nifty design tool, and uh, it has a very powerful back end using the uh, CSIRO's developed Chenith engine, performing all those calculations and modelling to reduce an energy rating. So... Um, a study conducted by Sustainability House determined that thermography and blower door testing are the most suitable as built methods for testing a home's performance, uh, which is exactly why we have prescribed this method ourselves uh, for testing at outlier. So what is an infrared camera? Uh, it's, it's a camera that's able to detect infrared energy of objects. Uh, and then the camera then converts that energy into an image that that indicates the surface temperature. And uh, we can see the, the variation in temperature where insulation is installed and where it is not. Um, so what is a blower door? It's basically, it's a giant fan that when operating, it either sucks the air out to depressurize or it pumps the air in to pressurize the home. Uh, as the fan is operating, uh, all the air leaks uh, in your home, um, they then pass through and those leaks, uh, sorry, all the air passes through those leaks and then they can be identified very easily just by the touch of your hand or, or even you could use a smoking device of some sort. Um, you can rent and buy the cameras and blower doors in Australia and there are plenty of helpful instructional videos on how to use them online. So this is a, yeah, an image uh, we've taken on our thermal camera. And it does a fantastic job of picking up where the insulation is missing or defective. And we can just see that where the bright yellow portions are, that's, that's the area that we can see where there's no insulation in this case. So the blower door is, it's a really fun activity, really. Um, and it can be pretty eye-opening to see where all the air leaks are coming from. Uh, it's a tad more intrusive to use than the thermal camera as it requires the fan and the support frame to be set up in an external doorway um, while the fan is operated. And, uh, you know, we need to also determine what the home floor area and volume is um, so that we can input it into the hand controller of the blower door to ensure that our results are accurate. All exterior openings, uh, such as doors and windows, they need to be closed. Um, and all the internal openings need to remain open while we're testing. And there's also a few other safety measures to be aware of, such as any wood or gas heating appliances need to be extinguished or set to pilot. Um, there is a standard that uh, we, we, we test to, um, which is the Australian standard or ASNZSIO ISO uh, 9972, that states we pressurize the home to 50 pascals of pressure. Uh, and then the controller is then able to tell us how many times the air um, for the entire volume of the home is being changed over that one hour interval. Um, abbreviated, this is typically indicated as ACH at 50P. And then they said, uh, I have listened to, to me, or I should say I've had so many conversations on the topic of house built verifications of energy ratings with, uh, with builders, with thermal assessors, with homeowners. Um, and, you know, I might like, I think I'll share some of the antidotes uh, before I jump into the data of some of these conversations. So um, at a recent industry association uh, event, uh, 
uh, attendees had an open floor to express their views on the transition from six to seven stars for NATO's assessments. What I heard was just pure frustration um, and a complete disregard towards energy ratings. Uh, yeah, energy ratings um, that thermal assessors were completing during construction. Um, it included experiences such as modeling a single window in a room for an assessment. However, when visiting the build to find two windows and a skylight in that room, um, a window manufacturer uh, ringing up an assessor to ask if they should be concerned they have manufactured single glazed aluminium windows when the assessor had modeled thermally broken double glazed windows. <laughs> On another occasion, a proud homeowner shortly after moving into their home showcasing their double glazed windows to be informed they were in fact single glazing. A builder being asked by the client, how do you provide guarantees that you have built our house to what the energy rating states? The builder's response was, that's my trade's responsibility, what the energy rating states. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty crazy to think that these are actually real conversations. Uh, these are real events that have happened. Um, and I have to admit that uh, some of our own experiences uh, with as-built verifications um, of energy ratings have had similarities. So, gee, I didn't know that. Um, there might be a misconception that all new homes in Australia require a NATHERS assessment or energy rating with a minimum six-star result. There are actually four methods in our National Construction Code to achieve compliance with the NCC's energy efficiency requirements. Number one is the NATHERS assessment or star rating. Number two is the verification against a reference building. At three, it's the deemed to satisfy method. So achieving all the performance values that are set out in the NCC. And lastly, at four, a performance solution. So you need to show in detail how you would reduce, your home would reduce carbon emissions. Uh, according to NAHERS, this is, the, theirs is the most popular pathway to demonstrating compliance with the National Construction Code energy efficiency requirements at around 90% of building approvals in 2020 to 2021 um, being assessed via the scheme. Uh, with around 80% of those being rated at six stars, the minimum six stars. Um, there are also some reductions um, to five star in tropical climates and a couple of the states have variations also such as New South Wales, which has their own assessment called BASICS. Um, I'd suggest that everyone watching right now goes and listens to the Builders Declares podcast, Sustainable Builders Jack energy efficiency with Jessica Allen for further information on this. Uh, right, so the most important of course though is the other misconception is that a home is checked during construction to ensure it is being built in accordance with the energy rating. Sadly, this is not a requirement and it does not happen. It's pretty crazy, uh, but yeah, that minimum six star rating, completely theoretical. Do as I data. So in my readings, it's, uh, it's mentioned in most studies that the reason the research was conducted in the first place was due to the concern being raised throughout the industry that new dwellings are not being constructed properly to meet the minimum energy efficiency standards of the National Construction Code. I, uh, I'm going to focus on Melbourne, being as that's where we predominantly operate in Victoria in the, um, over the next few slides. Uh, so, yeah, but overall, what did the research tell us? Air leakage. So I extracted this table uh, from a CSIRO study that was carried out in 2015. And it involved the testing of 20 new houses up to three years old in each capital city around Australia. And it was assumed that given the national construction Construction code requirements that they were all NATHERS assessed at a minimum six star energy rating or equivalent deemed to satisfy. So this table shows us um, the results of the blower door testing to those homes in that, in that study. And I'm going to signal out Melbourne at 19.7 air changes an hour. 
Um, I haven't been able to screw down a, a single number that Natas assumes for air leakage in a home. Um, however, it seems to range anywhere from seven air changes an hour to 15 air changes an hour. Either way, our homes in Melbourne are well above the assumed air leakage rates in a NATHERS assessment. Ceiling insulation. For most, uh, for most homes in the study, a physical inspection of the ceiling insulation could be conducted. Um, it is stated in the report that Melbourne had the highest proportion of insulation with lower R values between R2 and R3. Now, the National Construction Code, a minimum total R value for a roof, so the system itself, in Melbourne's climate zone is R4.1. So overall, the majority of our ceiling insulation quality and condition was also determined to be average in Melbourne. So wall insulation could not physically be inspected. So thermal cameras were adopted for this. The assessment was narrowed down to the evenness and coverage of insulation, as well as identifying any gaps in the insulation. Combining the ceiling and wall insulation, uh, the findings in the table provides an overall result um, of what the home's insulation quality was like. And again, um, we can see the overall in Melbourne, it was, it was again, majority average. Great news is the report used images to show uh, or to identify what the assessment of poor, average and good quality insulation was to be considered as. Uh, I really love that poor quality one where the insulation is still in the bags. That's a, that's a classic. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll just ask everyone to take note of this because it'll be referenced later as well, but um, it's particularly average. So uh, the last one I'll just chat on quickly is weather stripping because there's an important thing to mention here. So it was indicated that the external doors and windows weren't sealed up very well either. Um, Melbourne homes, uh, they were rated as average for window ceiling and poor, poor for external doors. So it might be assumed that this is why we see high air change rates with the blower door testing. However, I'll add that um, they did not, however, find any correlation between the poor ceiling of windows and doors and the results of the blower door test. seeing it with our own eyes. So I'm going to go through um, an example of an as-built verification that we have conducted. So um, yeah, please feel free to write down any questions that you may have about what we do. And I'll do my best to answer them at the end of the webinar, or you can also reach out to us via our social media um, platforms or website. So to begin with, we'll review the plans and the energy rating and uh, we'll make note of any discrepancies that we find in that documentation. Um, yeah, we'll identify the glazing performance values. We'll cross-reference the glazing sizes on the plans and the energy rating, so make sure they're the same. We'll identify the insulation performance values and where they locate, where that insulation is located. Um, we'll identify penetration such as downlights and exhaust fans, and make sure they're consistent as well. Um, so then, this prepares us for the site inspection. Uh, on exhibit A, as this will formally be known, uh, the R, uh, yeah, so R7 uh, insulation bat was being proposed in the ceiling, uh, which is uh, 295 millimetres in height. And we did note that there was no allowance um, being made in the truss design at all. So this would require that, uh, that insulation to be compressed into the perimeter of the home at that truss here, which is around about 100 millimetres at best um, to fit in there. Right, so now we're on site. Uh, the energy rating noted there was an R2.7 in the external walls. And when we inspected that, it was actually an R2.5 that we found in those walls. Um, we got images of the actual bags from this site as well. Uh, and as mentioned on that previous slide, that the energy rating had an R7 in the ceiling uh, of the home. Uh, yeah, so. Um, 
there was R7 in the ceiling. And yeah, so upon inspection on the site, there was a mixture of uh, R3.5 and R4.1 throughout the ceiling. And uh, yeah, the, the homeowner was not aware of that at all, uh, none of this. So uh, we also noted that the external wrap had been cut and removed at locations for the installation of a shower niche, a meter box and some other services as well. You can see some of the remnants on, on that left-hand image of the external wrap. Okay, so the ceiling insulation um, was raised and, and missing in locations. And we can see the color variations in the uh, R3.5 and the R4.1 throughout the ceiling as well. And I'll do my best to sort of point some of that out. Um, so if we have the laser pointer, That doesn't want to work. There we are. Uh, so here at the, in the front of this center image, we can see it's more of a, a pinky color, which upon inspection, this was the, uh, yeah, the, the 3.5. And then as it gets down further, we can see it turns to a yellow color, which was the uh, 4.1. Um, so yeah, we, we measured the insulation thicknesses on site and we confirmed those or verified those with the product specifications as well. So what is everyone's thoughts on uh, the quality of this uh, insulation? That's the image from the report. I think it might be average quality of insulation. As the insulation was installed after the bricks were laid, um, none of the external frame junctions were insulated. We can see, uh, again, I'll use the, the pointer. We can see uh, the back of the external wrap, the reflection, um, silver reflection there. So we can see there's no insulation in, in this uh, in this frame junction at all. So that's where all the internal walls meet the external walls and where the external walls meet on, a, on, an, out, on an external corner as well is no insulation at all. Um, I'm just, yeah, point out that's what that's basically what these frame junctions look like on this um, particular home. So no insulation at all. And then on the external as well. So uh, the glazing, the windows, uh, as nominated on the plans, they were consistent with the energy rating and confirmed, yeah, using the Window Energy Rating Scheme or WERS website, which is a database that uh, all the manufacturers of windows um, are on there and they have all their performance values and they get, it can be selected for use in the energy rating software. It's a really handy tool if you're also looking to compare the performance value of various windows and doors. Inspecting uh, on site, the glazing makeup differed from the energy rating as well. And, and this particular window was modeled as a 3123, being three millimeters of clear glass with a 12 millimeter air gap, and then another three millimeter clear piece of glass. Um, the labeling on the site indicates that it was a four millimeter piece of glass, a 9.5 millimeter air gap, and a four millimeter clear piece of glass. Now, I'm not suggesting there's a reduction to performance values in this case, but just discrepancies between the documentation and what was on site. The window install itself. Um, it is stated in the report that all gaps between the window frames, external doors, plumbing fixtures and penetrations are to be sealed. Um, I've substituted an example image here on the left uh, and the middle as the uh, owner had already uh, been to site and insulated and sealed up the gaps, which you can see on the, uh, the top right um, image here. And uh, yeah, if the owner had not done this uh, and remained unsealed and not insulated, it would have just been covered in plaster and an architrave fixed over the top. So we can see here on the left image, that's just basically straight to outside. Um, in the middle image here, we can see that some low expansion foam has been used to seal up that gap right around the window. Um, it has then been cut back and then yeah, sealed up with some silicon here or sealant. So we're yet to uh, blow a door this particular home. However, it is similar to a previous home we tested. Um, the external wrap on this particular home in, in the image here, was, uh, the, the external wrap joints had been taped. Um, the external doors and windows had been sealed and weather stripped correctly. Uh, and this home achieved uh, seven uh, air changes an hour at 50 Pascal. If 
the attention had not been paid to mitigating air leakage um, by the client in our example, Exhibit A project, um, I would expect to see the result above 10 ACH um, at 50 Pascal. And um, I, I just want to mention um, that although the Air National Construction Code has a verification method, which is V2.6.2.3, um, to verify the building envelope ceiling by using a lower door to achieve a result of no greater than 10 ACH at 50p, it is not mandatory and would need to be agreed by the owners and the builder prior to beginning construction. Lastly, uh, yeah, using a thermal camera. It's a, it's a fantastic way to do a final review um, of quality of, ins of the uh, insulation. Um, why? Is unbeknown to the owner or builder, a trade may have removed insulation uh, for better access to fit off services, for lighting, um, forgotten to replace the insulation. Um, yeah, it, it, the sweep through the home with the camera, it'll quickly identify any defects or missing insulation that can be, then be rectified. Uh, we're yet to review the example project um, that I've just presented. However, my focus will uh, certainly be around the ductwork and downlights, uh, which we can see in this particular example picture, um, a bright yellow where the insulation is missing. Uh, these particular downlights are halogen. Um, they do require insulation that I should mention in this particular image, a halogen, um, not in the Exhibit A project. Uh, and they do require insulation to be missing around that light under the National Construction Code. However, new LED downlights that are IC rated can be insulated over or abutted to. Um, it's also a great opportunity at this stage to, uh, to confirm the quantities and locations of the penetration, such as downlights and exhaust fans. what we identified. Um, so the summary of uh, that exhibit of exhibit A. <clears throat> we identified the incorrect insulation and average quality um, of, of the installation. It was a really average ins um, installation of that. Uh, we also identified there were tears um, or, or parts of the external wrap had been removed. Uh, we identified there were different glazing systems installed than specified. Uh, identified there were inadequate ceiling around external windows and doors. And also that there was likely a higher uh, air infiltration rate than assumed by matters. We don't have an answer um, as to what the home will be reassessed as um, based on our findings. Um, but, you know, I might all ask, I might ask everyone just to consider what it might be. I, I, I certainly don't think it's going to be the 7.4 star rating that the owner expected it to be uh, or that he had actually paid for. So where do we start? Sustainability Victoria have created a, a really comprehensive checklist on conducting an as-built verification. Um, the methodology has been successfully tested and there are fantastic instructional videos on Sustainability Victoria's website with their Zero Net Carbon Homes video series, which they collaborated with the legends at Efficiency Matrix to create. Uh, Sustainability Victoria have adopted the National Construction Code verification of a building envelope ceiling method uh, to not exceed air leakage rates greater than 10 air changes per hour at 50 uh, Pascal reference pressure when tested in accordance with the Australian New Zealand standard ISO 9972 and method one. Um, they also state that the thermal insulation must be consistent um, and that the building envelope must achieve a minimum 95% coverage for floors, ceilings and walls. What can we do? Uh, so at Outlier, we include, uh, I'll say some detail, maybe a lot of detail around air tightness. And we also specify um, to blow it or test the home. So it, to achieve, you know, that, it, to have that maximum 10 uh, air changes now at 50 Pascal air infiltration. Um, you'll see that uh, over here, we just have a little schedule, some text notations, a call out um, of the National Construction Code verification method. And we like to get a little, a little bit more detail driven 
given. So we've got three, uh, three stages there that we would like to perform the blower toward testing at. It's a really good way to validate um, that, you know, what we're designing is also doing as it should do. We include uh, an insulation plan as well. We can see here, um, which clearly highlights where all the insulation is going. We have a specification over here, which states what the value, performance values of that insulation are. Um, and if you're, yeah, if you're looking to incorporate this into your own documentation, which I really highly hope that everyone does, uh, you can look at sustainability of Victoria's as built verification um, fact sheet and checklist and, and just see what you can incorporate into your documentation from there. Um, even just stating the performance values and criteria from there is you know, a great start. So inserting a hold point um, into the building contract. So yeah, a homeowner can, or even the builder can request hold points in the building contract um, that require a certain performance value to be met before proceeding uh, further with the build. Uh, an example of this uh, may be to po you know, post plaster, a blower door test has to be uh, performed um, and a result of no greater than 10 ACH at uh, 50 pascals must be achieved before continuing on. Um, you can also call up that verification method from the NCC um, V2.6.2.3 uh, and verify the building envelope ceiling um, by using the blower door in the contract. Um, look, I will always say seek legal advice on that, of course, anything to do with contracts. Um, that's just, yeah, an experience through my own experiences. Um, lastly, uh, you can use the service uh, of an independent assessor uh, to perform an as-built verification of the home. There are quite a few offering this now, um, including ourselves here at Outlier. So why we need as-built validations for our energy ratings. Our experiences and the, uh, the current research show that what is being assessed using NATO software modeling is not what is being constructed. And if 80% of the assessments are rated at the minimum six stars, it's likely as built, many are not meeting the minimum standards of the energy efficiency requirements of the National Construction Code. If, uh, if we're to paint um, a true picture for the forecast of Australia meeting and reaching our net zero emissions by 2050, then we really need to know how our homes are performing as built. Um, you know, it's estimated that Australia's households um, could generate up to a fifth of the Australian, of Australia's greenhouse gases. Um, you know, it's considerable. Um, it, it's noted in, in studies that uh, countries, um, you know, Ultimately, we want to improve the build our housing stock as well. And it's noted in, in studies that countries that test homes during construction have, you know, really high energy efficient homes. And the quality of construction has increased due to, the, to this knowledge as well. You know, that everyone knows it's going to be tested. They, they pay attention um, during the construction to the details to mitigate air leakage. Australia, uh, Australia needs to almost double the amount of its current housing stock if, if we're expected to meet the projected population growth by 2050. And with approximately 200,000 new homes being built a year now, um, it's time to begin verifying the construction of our homes. Reducing household operating costs. I mean, power bills, pretty straightforward. The less the heating, the less heating and cooling required, the smaller the power bill. The consumer guarantee. It provides a guarantee that the homeowner is getting exactly what they've paid for. Um, we wouldn't accept this for anything else. Imagine, you know, that the car analogy is the one that always gets used and it couldn't be truer. You wouldn't accept buying a car that was um, not performing as they'd stated or didn't have the ANCAP rating that it had been tested um, for. It, it's, yeah, it, it's still mind boggling to think that we will spend the most amount of money. Or this could be the most amount of money you'll spend on any one item and we still just take it as it is on paper, theoretically. Lastly, it can increase the value of your home. So there was a study by the ACT government um, and it concluded that homes that are more inefficient uh, or are energy efficient, you know, they see an increase in that property value. So we need to design and construct homes that provide the performance and the environmental outcomes um, required for us all today. And I believe this can only be guaranteed 
by as-built verifications of our homes. This is where we need to go. Um, it was a very short presentation, I'm sure, but um, I really do look forward to opening this up for the, you know, some questions now, if anyone has any. Anthony, thanks so much for that. I hope, um, I hope everyone found that um, really valuable. I, know I certainly did. And, and for someone who does um, test our homes um, on a regular basis, um, from a personal level, I, I really appreciate um, how valuable this is and um, yeah, how important it will be moving forward. Um, now, that we do have a few questions that are coming through. Um, actually, one of our uh, other family members, Brian, I think um, his boot was horrified by some of the um, images that he uh, uh, saw there. So I might actually read through some of his comments because they're, um, I think one of, his, one of his comments was horrendous. Um, and was that a supplier install or a builder install? Um, uh, yeah, so I'm probably talking about your one of your case studies there with some of the insulation there. So did you know if it was a supplier or was it, was it the builder who installed that? Firstly, I'm just going to, uh, hi, Brian. There's, a, there's another, word, uh, another um, saying I saw in a report that said pathetically inadequate. That was how they described the current um, yeah, situation at the moment in Australia. But back to that, it was a contractor. So build out, contracted it out to an insulation company. Yeah. Um, so uh, in the blower, uh, did, did you say that you did a blower door test on that particular project? Because um, Brian's next question was, was there a target um, for the air tightness on the project? There wasn't. Uh, we were engaged shortly after construction had started as the client had sort of lost faith in the builder's abilities. Um, pretty obvious why, I guess, right? So no target at such, uh, but uh, we get provided some advice to the client early on and he was able to do a lot of that air, you know, um, mitigation work for air leakage early on. So the external wrap, he was able to attend to that as well, seal those joins, I'll tape those joins, sorry, and then seal the gaps around windows and doors as I noted in the image. Um, so I'm pretty interested to see um, when we do finally get back there in a couple of weeks, what that result will be. Can I can I ask um, what the what the builder's response was when you started to point all these things out? Was was there pushback? I mean, because I can imagine that this this is one of many builders out there who's not mm. um, delivering what's what what they're meant to from an energy performance point of view. The owner um, so the, yeah this. Uh, I'm, in this situation, we were only able to advise. We weren't, there was no contractual agreement for any rectification on any of this, unfortunately. Uh, however, the owner and the builder are, have, have come to an agreement. Um, I'm not privy to that, but yeah, I'm, I'm assuming there's hopefully some reimbursement there um, as well. I'm sorry, does that answer the question, Hamish? Yeah. Yeah, it was more, it was, more, was there any pushback from the builder um, to say that they um, weren't interested in bringing up the performance? Uh, no, no, there wasn't. I don't think they knew what they were getting themselves into. They sort of said, yeah, yeah, we're happy to work with you and, you know, be a part of it on that particular project. Um, however, I've, I've since called them personally and said, I want you all there for the blow door test. Uh, and they've agreed. So it'd be really cool wow. to get them all there for that and show them how a blow door works and, and give them my time to yeah, show them what the results will yeah, be my, for doing these things. My, my hope from them actually wanting to come to that um, is going to show them, you know, where these leakages occurs and hopefully the homes that they're building in the future, um, some of those are going to be mitigated. I really so that would so. be that'd be a that'd be a real positive. Um, so there's another question from Brian. Um, given what you saw on the day, could you quantify the reduction in performance? Uh, or I guess anecdotally, you know, let us know how like what star rating you would give that home, uh, given its current um, or given how it's currently built or put together? Oh, I'd really, yeah, I'd really be guessing, I think. Um, if it was closer, I, I suspect it's probably close to around six stars. If I was just to, I'm going to throw the guest of it out there and what I saw, what I've seen with others that have been tested and, and the results from that. So I would put it very close to six stars. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, orientation, um, you know, the glazing, um, a few other things that, such as the the client's rectification works, I would say would be the saving grace in this in this one. Yeah. 
Um, so another question, uh, would you think this is a systematic problem or even uh, like an industry standard problem? Uh, so, I wish it, I wish it wasn't, but that's kind of what it's leading me to believe. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. The majority, as we say, 80% of those uh, assessments at six stars, at the minimum six stars. And what I'm seeing now indicates that, yeah, this is, this is pretty much like, this is one home in a, in a 200 home uh, or stage one, you know, 200 stage one um, development. You know, this is pretty consistent right through that estate anyway. And do you know, uh, like in your opinion, and it's probably hard to say because you're not a lawyer, but um, is, is there any recourse options for the client in this situation? Like, can they lean in on the NCC or can they lean in on the energy report as part of the construction documentation? Uh, yeah, I can't say where they, they couldn't. Um, it's pretty valid to say that, but uh, like everything, you don't want to end up in court. Like, it's a very costly, timely experience. And when you're already going through the stresses of the current industry and, and things. So that's one thing I'll mention too. Unfortunately, it, it might be that the client in this particular case might have been leveraged a little bit by the by the current industry and the builder and supply chain issues and things for pressures to for time constraints. So yeah, there's a lot of factors there for sure. Um, and if they wanted to, I feel like they would have a, a you know a reasonable um, a reasonable case to take it forward further, take it further. Yeah. Um, another question here: uh, Do you see this getting any better with the whole of home assessment? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I'm a positive person, you know, like anything that's a step forward is a, it's great for me. Like, that's awesome. Um, and I'm hoping that we do see, I was really, really excited by way of Jeremy, if you're watching, to see you uh, put in those, um, the air change, you could, well, sorry, having the ability to alter the air change rate of, of a assessment. So that's something I've been waiting for for a long time. So we'll chat about that anyway. But yeah, I do. I think it's a, it's a it'll be a, even if it's a small improvement, it's a step forward and we just keep going. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I agree. Uh, another question here. If the blower door test returns a higher value, so I guess a higher air change than it's expected, is it too late to rectify? Uh, no, there are some, some things that can be done. Um, again, further sealing or caulking uh, at junctions, and et cetera. Um, but it's not ideal. Yeah, there's only, it's limited in how much you can do. Yep. Um, and at what point during the build is is it ideal to run a blower door? Yeah, uh, look, I'll give you my recommendation. I like to do it pre-plaster, so external wrap. I love to see um, how that's performing first. We'll do a post-plaster um, and then we'll do one, yeah, towards the completion of the build as well once everything's fitted off. Yep, that's generally our approach too. This is actually a great question um, from Jared, uh, and I will get to some of the other Q&As in a second if uh, you haven't, uh, if I haven't read your question out yet. Um, why does the VBA or other states equivalent not oversee such things if they are responsible for the overseeing of construction, uh, in, if, they're, if they, are they are responsible for the overseeing of construction industry? I mean, that's a fantastic question. Like, why? Yeah, uh, I might be stepping out of line here, but I think once upon a time they did inspect insulation. I think that might have been one of the inspections that was carried out, definitely before my time. Um, however, yeah, uh, I don't know now, like why they why they're not. I don't know why they they stripped that back. Um, and we took a step backwards, really, didn't we? So, yeah, good question, really good question. I, I don't know the answer. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe not just the NCC, but why why isn't there a statute strategy requirement to um, actually have an insulation or a glazing check? I think um, just is the broader question. Um, so, uh, do you know of any of the consequences to a builder if a home doesn't meet the energy rating as built? Uh, yeah, I suppose I can only speak again in, in this case, as I say, that the, the builder and the um, client were able to come to an agreement or arrangement on that um yeah, yeah I, I honestly don't know of anyone that's been through that process where they've had the energy efficiency uh ncc book thrown at them um and what's been the repercussions of that yeah i guess it's like anything that you would hope that um well, these things would be re resolved outside of court and you can come to an agreement as homeowner and and builder um 
So there's another question from Paul here. Uh, can you talk us through the requirements for a renovation and what are your thoughts on heritage and the need to retain headlight, uh, lead lights? Don't know how we go about yep. answering that question from an energy, energy performance point of view, but it's probably more referring to, you know, keeping um, heritage um, items on a building and how that can then uh, uh, affect the performance of a home if you can't make changes to the existing part of the building. Yeah, so... Oh, yeah, it's so much to unpack there. Um, it, it's so specific. It's, when since you're going to be existing, it's like so specific to that individual project and what the exact requirements are and what the elements are. But I mean, I've seen particularly with windows, they're usually the sticking point because we can we can attend to the air tightness, detailing, and insulation, everything from the inside, while the external fabric remains as it is in its heritage nature. Um, but with windows, you obviously still have to show keep that. Um, those visuals of the heritage aspect of those on the windows on the exterior, but you might look at some secondary glazing options on the inside or something like that, where you get to tend to those airtight details and um, yeah, do it that way. It, um, yeah. I feel free to contact me with that particular project or whatever it is. And I'm, I'm more than happy to provide advice on that. So, or have my input. Uh, uh, Clyde Anderson has just jumped in and said, uh, lead lights can be lined with single glass, making them double glazed. You'd probably just want to make sure that that's properly sealed so you don't get any condensation build up um, between the two panes but that I have heard of that being an approach or even inserting a, a DGU um, internally or externally to it yeah um, another question from Clyde um, how much time does a blower door test take and what range of time should be allowed yeah I'd say typically we can um, I mean the test itself yes we can have results within minutes, um, but the setup and the walkthroughs and everything collectively, I'd sort of allow about an hour typically. Um, and then if we're chasing air leaks, well, <laughs> hours. We, can, we can spend time. <laughs> yeah. Hours, hours upon hours upon hours. Um, uh, so here's a question. Um, do you have a preference between fiberglass, polyester or other insulation material, assuming the R values are the same? Uh, we specifically use, um, yeah, glass wool, um, mostly just for, at the moment, supply as well. Uh, polyester is also a good option, really good to work with. Um, but I have read that some of the older electrical cabling and polyester bats don't always get along really well. So it's worth definitely checking that. Um, but yeah, that would probably be what we use most often. Just, um, yeah, fiberglass bats. I think as the um, it becomes more cost competitive, I think uh, wood fiber is probably going to be a game changer for its density as well. Yes, yeah, I'm, I can't wait to actually use that product in a in a in a design coming up. So, very excited by that. Great. Um, why does the NCC refer to air permeability and not ACH, so air change per hour? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that either as to why they didn't just reference it straight out of the ISO, but they do provide a um, explanation or explanatory, explanatory note um, under that part of the NCC explaining the conversion and, and we work off of that. Yep. Uh, so another question is uh, probably specifically around, around the services that you guys offer. So how much would an as-built inspection like the one you just talked through cost yeah, travel's the, the hard one for us. We're Central Vic located um, and we sort of allow for an hour travel around. So anything beyond that has additional costs. But it, for us, that standard inspection, we sort of just over 2,000 is what we're sort of working on at the moment. Yep. Um, and I guess we can probably answer this question off the bat, but could, could a person insist on this as part of a building contract? Um, I guess in any special uh, special conditions, you can write in uh, that it's a, as built validation in your building contract correct yep yep um so jared said he's currently doing an extension and wants to do a blower door test when completed how does a blower test work on extensions and renovations it's a good question yeah i, I would probably um do a two-parter uh do the overall calculate volumes and areas for the overall and then i would do a compartment and compartmentalized one as well just to see what the the new um extension is performing like um, we have one actually just in Benigo. Uh, yeah, at the moment, we're just doing that exact same thing where it's perfect little extension, um, single door access, the existing house didn't have any detailing done, the rear did. And um, yeah, we'll compare the, the two of those. 
In, I, I'm going to I'm going to ask you a question. Um, with uh, with with something like that where you're touching, where you're doing an extension, there's a very clear line where an extension is, and you're not really doing much to the existing part of the house. Um, if we're making the back part of the house, that new extension, um, airtight, high performing, well wrapped, good amounts of insulation, uh, how does that affect the existing part of the house or how does the existing part of the house affect the performance of the new part of the home if the existing part of the house is not being brought up to uh, standard? Yeah, uh, gosh, a bit of a past the buck but it's a um again project specific so this one i just talked about in Benigo, it was literally an open plan living extension so it was easily zoned off totally fine there was no um you know there was no breakup of where those zones and spacings were going to be that was living the existing was bedrooms bath um, but in a case where that would alter and vary then yeah it's going to have an impact the overall goodness of the home is is going to um yeah be evened out somewhere in between that um just through user, um, so occupant um, behavior as well. You know, that's a big part of it. That's the thing we can't um, we can't verify, right? Occupant behavior. So that's why thermal comfort's always a subjective um, thing. So, yeah, and it, it is. I mean, it is. If we're talking about extensions and renovations, it is it is challenging to um, well, it's almost impossible to test the existing and the and the new part. Um, and you know, say one. Well, we obviously know one's better than the other, but it is hard to um, quantify the effect on the existing on the new and the new on the existing without um, you know having that clear block between the two. Uh, if you were going to test it, um, this is probably the first time we've 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 wrapped up early, Anthony. But um, <laughs> incredibly uh, informative, and I'm you know being a passive house builder, and I know a lot of our listeners are, and and some of the members of Builders Declare are. Um, where a lot of our projects are actually getting tested and validated. Um, I personally hope that it is introduced into our standard, into the NCC. Um, but what you guys are doing um, at Outlier is fantastic and I think it's a really great um, thing for consumers and owners and, and you know, even builders and architects to, to write into their contracts or make it um, part of, uh, you know, the the process in in the build to actually get it validated and tested i think it's fantastic yeah yeah thanks thanks hamish yeah and like the the ability to learn from it too for many designers architects out there that um you know your the learning curve is it's just so steep once you start being yeah. on, present for these you know for the tests for blower doors for insulation inspections like you're just learning so much so quickly and the growth rate's incredible so it yeah it's great um, yeah, thanks again, Hamish, and thanks for no to everyone for joining us um, tonight, taking the time out to, to watch. And so I'll, I'll wrap it up here and say um, a big thanks to tonight's sponsors, uh, Templestow Timber and Hardware. As I said, um, you can get in contact with them through sales at templestowtimber.com. Again, they have a fantastic online shop, templestowtimber.com.au. Um, now, there is one uh, new... Another question that's just come through. Um, uh, as is a good point from Sue. If homeowners can have confidence in the parts of the build they can't see, maybe they'll be inspired to spend more on those parts and not just on fancy taps and bench tops. I actually couldn't agree more. Um, now, a little quick plug to our podcast. Um, episode eight of Sustainable Builders Yak is out. Uh, this new one, uh, this podcast, Simon and Brian catch up with Olivia Terzowski from Boutique Lawyers. This episode is not specifically around sustainable building, um, but having listened to it myself, it's an absolute must listen for any builder building in this current climate. Um, lots of great information in there and um, I definitely encourage you guys to um, check it out. Um, our next webinar, we'll be talking to Jim from Suho, a South Australian-based company that advises, analyzes, and designs built environments to better respond to our climate, our planet's climate and biodiversity challenges. Uh, more specifically, Jim will talk about their 10-star display home. Um, 
if you want to get in contact with us, email info at buildersdeclare.com or join in on the conversation on our Facebook page. Uh, and you can also get in touch with us on Instagram. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And Anthony, thanks very much for your presentation. Pleasure. All right. See you later.